Hi, my name is Giselle and I am here to talk to you about my experience getting rhinoplasty with Dr. Mohamed Dilber in Istanbul, Turkey. I've gotten a lot of messages from people who um, are interested in getting surgery with them, so I kind of thought I would go through the whole process from beginning to end with Dr. Dilber since, to be honest, I had struggles trying to figure that entire process out as well because there was only one girl who did make a YouTube video on this and although her video was very helpful. Um, I was coming from the US and I think it's a completely different process. And I also had a very uh, thick skinned Middle Eastern nose and she had a very tiny nose and her nose is absolutely beautiful and it turned out great, but I think mine is just completely different. I'll just basically go through the process of that and then you guys can decide whether or not you want to book with Dr. Dilber. So from the beginning, basically I found Dr. Dilber through Instagram from a friend of mine and um, I loved his work. He did like the great cutest little button noses and that was kind of something similar along the lines of what I was wanting to do. And I basically um, requested a consultation, I guess is what it is, through WhatsApp. And a month before I did, my friend actually requested some information from him. And I think they quoted her 7,000 US dollars for just her first rhinoplasty. But for me, it was different since I was a revision rhinoplasty. So I actually did have a rhinoplasty prior. And for me, they quoted me 10,000 US dollars. And I think that's kind of one of the biggest things right now with Dr. Dilber, everyone I see on like the, the forms and all that they're trying to figure out because there are different costs. So there is euros, there is US dollars, there is Turkish lira. I'm sure it's all over the place and these prices have possibly already changed or they may change in the future depending on when you're watching this and it's it's not something that I would fully rely on from me saying just because it could be completely different um, and that's something that you'd have to reach out to his office for just because as plastic surgeons tend to get more popular or costs tend to increase prices also increase so don't pay too much attention to that number just yet but if you kind of want to get a gist of where it's at that's kind of what it was for me so when my friend did initially contact uh, the doctor, they were actually booked out into September, or no, I'm sorry. Um, they were booked out into 2022 in general. And this was around, I think it was around May, 2021 that this was all requested. And so I requested just soon after her and they actually had a spot that was just opened up and basically they had a cancellation. And it was very soon. It was like within a month, I think after um, I requested and I kind of, just thought, screw it, I'm just gonna go ahead and do it, I'm gonna take the chance. They basically, all they wanted was just the $500 deposit, which would be wired over to them, and they sent over the bank account information. And to be honest, it was kind of sketchy. I'm not normally used to any of that type of stuff. Um, here in the US, obviously things are very structured, so it's like, you have to go in, do your consultation in person or virtual, you send in the deposit, which is obviously a little bit more secured, and then you go in and you do a lot of paperwork and contracts to basically state that whether you were to cancel whatever, then you would lose the money or so on. And so things are a little bit different and more structured here, but when you're going to another country, I think the biggest thing you have to realize is that like you, you can't really expect much. It's not gonna be that much structure. It's in another country, things are done differently. Um, so I just took that chance of doing it and I'm not gonna lie I had so much anxiety about it that either something would go wrong. Did I make a mistake? Did uh, you know was I gonna not be happy with the results? Is this gonna be too much money? Whatever the case was and I Just decided to take the chance. So I sent over the $500 and then they just basically gave me the surgery date and that was all that I kind of got and so um I think after that, I was just kind of quiet. You know, there's nothing that you can really do with the doctor's office. You just have to wait for the appointment. So I made sure I booked my flights. So I got that all set. I booked my hotel um, and they did actually offer a hotel package with Hyatt. And I think they said it was $2,000 um, plus it included the hospital transportation and I didn't go end up booking with them, um, which I kind of wish that I did because not only was it with them, but it was very close to the doctor's office and it was a very like short walk that you could have done. Um, and it was close to a gallery, a mall, where you could have gotten and like started eating food and shopping and things. So it was in a better location, I feel like, in comparison to where I stayed. And that was it. <laughs> so I basically got my flight booked. I had my hotel booked. 
um, and I had the surgery date and everything set. And I, I even sent a few messages throughout that process, just kind of confirming because I was very nervous. So I was kind of confirming like it's 10,000 US dollars, correct? Like I'm not going to go there. You're not going to say, oh, we ended up being longer or ended up whatever and them charging me more. And so I was very nervous that was the case because that tends to be things that happens here in the US. They'll be like, oh, there's complications, end up being longer, blah, blah, blah. And they charge you more. And so uh, I was very nervous about that. I wanted to make sure I covered all my bases and I just kind of said, whatever, I'm already too far into this. Everything's booked. I'll lose my money if I cancel. So I just kind of went for it. And I saw that there was like a real self forum about Dr. Dilber and I was reading some experiences and some people had bad experiences, some people had great experiences, but every surgeon is gonna have that. And I think you kind of have to expect that there's never gonna be one surgeon that has all of their patients fully satisfied. And that's just because we all have different expectations. Um, to kind of backtrack to a little bit in that initial virtual consultation, which was done through WhatsApp, um, I sent my pictures of my nose and then I kind of sent pictures of what I wanted. And um, they told me whether it was achievable or not, and they said yes. And in my case of being a revision, I also sent in my prior surgical records just so they could take a look and kind of see what was done. Was there anything in specific that popped out to them and whatever the case would be. Um, and they said everything was good to go. It was possible that he could work on my nose and they said everything was basically all set. So basically once all of that was done, all that was left to do was to travel over to Turkey. And so when the day finally came, we obviously went to the airport, traveled there. I got there on a Sunday and then I had my pre-op on a Monday. And the only, I feel like the kind of annoying part of this all was that I'm a very structured person and I like to have a schedule and I want everything to be like, I want to know what time I'm supposed to be, where I'm supposed to be, the complete locations, I could put it on the calendar. Um, and they do things a little bit differently. I don't know if it's because it is in another country, but I didn't get like my pre-op information until the day before, which is when I landed. And they told me like, hey, go to the hospital at this time, blah, 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 in the doctor's office at this time. And then I didn't even have information still on the surgical day. Okay, so basically um, I didn't get any of that pre-op information and that was um, off-putting for me just because I like the structure. But regardless, I still got that information and they were very responsive. Um, so the next day came along and um, basically this is how my nose was right before I had my surgery and obviously a lot of people have said that it's a good nose. I agree. I had a fine nose. It, nothing was wrong with it, um, but I did have specific structural things that I wanted to change. I did want a higher tip. I wanted to feel a little bit more feminine and that was something that I just wanted to change in general. Um, and it's my body. I feel like at this point there should be no shame now with plastic surgery just because it is very normal um, and it should be very accepted. And so I uh, went into my pre-op and the pre-op is kind of split into two appointments. So the first appointment was at a hospital which is where you get the surgery done. And I showed up there. I uh, had a translator too as well, since I don't speak Turkish. She directed me where to go for the pre-op. And so I went up to the floor. I paid the $100 for the pre-op, which is the appointment cost. And that includes um, meeting with the anesthesiologist, just covering some basic questions about like your social history, um, et cetera. And then I also met with um, the nurse who basically drew my blood for my pre-ops and as well did a COVID test. And they obviously had to cover their bases for all of that. And that was pretty much what the pre-op at the hospital consisted of. And then the second pre-op appointment was at the doctor's office. And the doctor's office was just about, I wanna say maybe like five minutes away from the hospital, but our appointment was at a later time in the afternoon. Um, so we, we went and did our own thing and then went to the doctor. And the office was beautiful. I think the biggest problem I had in Turkey was trying to locate things. And we did have struggles finding the office just cause um, when we do ask for directions or help if we are lost, it is a little difficult because of that language barrier. Um, so it wasn't the easiest thing to try to figure out where, where we're going. But regardless, um, we did show up to the doctor's office and the doctor's office was beautiful. Um, we did sit down and um, wait in the 
waiting room when we first got there and then they took me back to go take before photos and they had like a full studio set up in another room where they had um, like lights and everything and they just kind of told you the positions and the videos of how to move your body and what the angles of your nose that they wanted to capture just so they had everything from before and then they sent me back to the waiting room again and then they had me go to the doctor's office and then so we walked in and I had another translator there as well and um, I kind of just discussed what I wanted to do. I showed, um, I had albums, which I do recommend you guys to do, is basically make an album of photos from his work specifically that you liked. And then I also did another album of photos from his work as well that I didn't want. So I made it clear, like, I don't want these types of noses that you've done and these types of noses I really liked. So these are kind of like where I'm sitting at and I uh, showed the doctor and the translator let him know that this is what I liked, this is what I didn't want, and then we kind of met in the middle. And he had my before photos already pulled up and they did a rendering on it. So they basically showed what they would expect my nose to look like. Um, and obviously it's not gonna look exactly like that, but um, these were kind of the idea of what it would be. Um, and that was basically it, that was, kind of where that appointment ended and I walked out to the front. I made my payment and so um, once I paid the cash, they also gave me some papers to sign. So this is where the contracts were. Um, and obviously I'm so used to getting it all done prior. And so they gave me some contracts to sign a few things. And then they also gave me a booklet um, of contracts that I needed to sign and give to the hospital when I went for my surgery. And there was also a little slip as well, basically stating that I needed to get these medications from the pharmacy before I went. So also keep that in mind that you do need to buy medication. One was Cipro, and that was your antibiotic. The other was, I think it was Parole or something. That was a kind of like a painkiller, and they said that would be for inflammation. There was an allergy medication, I think it was called Arius, um, and that was just to make sure that they maintained your allergies so you're not sneezing or having issues that could cause obstructions or anything. And then there was, uh, I think it was called Sinomarin, that was a sinus spray. And then there was another one which was basically like an antibiotic ointment, and that was kind of like a neosporin, I think, um, just to help with scarring, healing, um, infections, all that stuff. Um, so those were the medications that I had to get prior to going to the surgery. So they actually did message me on WhatsApp saying that they had some things move around in their schedule. I don't know if someone ended up postponing their surgery or whatever the case was, and um, that I can get my surgery a day earlier, which was the day after my post-op, which was basically in my head tomorrow. Um, and I just kind of said, screw it, like I'm gonna do it now. At least I could heal earlier, I give myself an extra day before I fly back home and um, just to do it. So I told them I'd be willing to go and I um, got the information. So basically I had to be at the hospital. I think they had me come at 12 p.m. And then um, I had to have all my medication as well. And you just, you literally can go into any pharmacy to get that medication. There was one like right around the corner of the hospital. And there's also like a huge mall, like right next to the hospital that when the taxi drops me off, it's either like a, a right to the uh, mall or a left to the hospital and I just went into the mall and the mall had a pharmacy in there and I got my medication there. Um, and then when you do show up to the hospital, obviously you go through the whole hospital procedures. The translator came in, took me to admissions, then went up and then I basically got undressed, gave in the information and they put an IV, that whole process. And then when I was ready, they basically took me back and did anesthesia and then I woke up. Um, I think the plus side of everything within Turkey was that they definitely have more experience of doing surgery on Middle Eastern noses, um, more so than some of the surgeons out here in the US. And then on top of that, they had kind of different things. I've never had or seen this, and I'm sure it probably does exist possibly in the US, but they had like silicone tampons that they put up into your nose. Um, and when I've had surgery in the past, it's usually like the thick cotton ones and I've known people who've just recently got it as well and they usually shove like the cotton ones up there. And the silicone one has like holes and so it's easier to breathe, you're not fully obstructed. Um, so I thought that was pretty cool. And then they actually do provide you with an overnight stay in the hospital as well, which I thought was like the best part of it. 
So basically when I woke up, I was in the hospital and um, my dad was there and they just take care of you. They make sure that they give you anything that you need. So they changed like the packings for my nose. They um, gave me anything. If I had pain, they would always have the IVN. So they kind of made sure everything was covered for that first 24 hours-ish after the surgery. And that was like my favorite part of it for sure. So they gave you, I think it was dinner and then they gave you breakfast just because you couldn't eat after the anesthesia for a little bit. They wanted to make sure that you were settled. Um, and then I just basically hung out there. I watched TV, I was on my phone. Um, next day I came around, the doctor came by to check up, make sure everything was okay. Um, and then he said I was pretty much free to go and that I would just come back for my one week to get um, the packing removed and the sutures cut and everything. Um, so I went back to the hotel and from that point was kind of the whole healing process. So basically from this point on it was the healing process and that was around I guess six to seven days because I had a one week appointment with the doctor. And um, I was pretty uncomfortable to be quite honest. I've had rhinoplasty in the past but I don't know if it was just more uncomfortable because I, I was in a completely different environment. I wasn't at home. Um, I wasn't in my own bed, I wasn't around my family, and I think that's kind of what made it a lot more harder, um, in my opinion, but it could be completely different for you. Um, I did have a lot of sinus drainage, and it wasn't really bloody, I mean a little bit it was, but not like I was having a nosebleed, it was just constant sinus drainage, and I think it was mostly because I was using the um, sinus spray, and I had to use it constantly throughout the day, and it would get really up in there and just slowly gravitate down over the course of the day. Um, and all I honestly wanted to do was blow my nose and I couldn't so I think that was kind of the more uncomfortable part about it because there was so much um, sinus drainage either coming through the back or the front and I think that's what made it very uncomfortable. Um, I didn't have a problem eating. I did drink a ton of water. Um, I always wanted to make sure that I was hydrated. Um, so I would say I, I did for sure over 64 ounces a day. Um, which is technically what you should be doing, but we all don't drink that much. Um, and then I did also take Arnica, um, which I started before surgery, and I took that all throughout as well as um, bromelain. And I took the bromelain pills, and I used the Arnica gel too, because I bruised really bad. Um, and I didn't really leave my hotel room that much. Um, I just kind of stayed and I relaxed and I made sure I ate my food, my breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, I just watched Netflix. I made sure I did all my medications um, and I relaxed. I think day three to four was probably the hardest for me um, in terms of a little bit of pain and just being really uncomfortable. Um, but it, it's probably completely different for every single person. In terms of my healing process, I think it was day to three was the worst. Um, and. I would probably say I was pretty much good to go after day five. Um, day five I was moving around, I was able to walk, I felt more comfortable doing things um, and working on any of my work or whatever or so on um, and I think that's kind of where things got a little bit easier was from day five. So then I talked to my translator about my post-op appointment where they were going to remove the packing and the sutures and everything and um, she told me when to go in so I had to go back to the hospital for this appointment. So I went back to the hospital and I had to go down into the clinic, which was another location from where I'd been before. And I met with another nurse. She took me back into the ENT um, room and then my translator came and joined. And I will kind of for sure call out my translator at this point where she was amazing. I think she definitely made the process so much easier and so much more comfortable for me, um, especially not speaking the language and she was amazing. Um, so I'm definitely happy that she was working with the doctor and able to kind of be there by my side from the beginning to the end of it all. Um, I think her name was Ezra, but she was, she was the best. So major call out for her. And at that appointment, they basically removed my sutures. They pulled the silicone packing out, which was un just terrible. And then I think the worst part was they had like this little thin, very long vacuum and they just stick it up into your nose and they just get everything in there. and. It just felt like it was going into my brain and I hated it, um, but loved it at the same time because everything was finally clear. And um, 
that was pretty much about it. The doctor came in and basically checked everything. Um, they did remove the cast as well, and there was a mirror from afar that I got to see my nose a little bit, and I didn't spend too much time looking at it just because they taped it again, um, just to keep the swelling down. And so um, the doctor came, checked everything, um, basically said everything was looking good, and that I would keep the tape on. I think it was until the next day. And then the next day, that morning, I could completely wash my face and then take it off and then I could um, scrub and make sure to get all that glue off because I did have a ton of glue from the cast prior and then now I had more tape on my nose and more glue from that. Um, so she said, don't be afraid, you're not gonna break your nose. Just try to basically scrub and get as much glue as you can off and you can put on makeup and basically that's it. And so I had my appointment with the doctor that next day for a final review because I was leaving early morning on Saturday and I went to the doctor's office um, and he did his final checks, looked at everything, kind of did all around, um, felt pressured, answered any questions that I had, um, and I was basically all set. They took a few of their after photos and the video as well that they posted on um, social media and he made sure that I liked it and I loved it. And I think to kind of go answering some questions that people have had or people have stated or whatever the case would be. Um, they have asked if it is something that you can travel by yourself for. And I think it is possible that it is something you can do by yourself. I just think it can be a little harder, um, but you can do by yourself. You just have to be in a hotel. And I hi highly recommend that you stay at the one that they worked with, which is Hyatt, um, which is close to their office. And then if you aren't traveling with anyone, um, also be mindful, obviously being in a foreign country, um, just to be careful. But otherwise, it's not it's not hard, it's just I think it, it can get kind of lonely. <laughs> so as far as my after, this is kind of where I'm sitting at right now. And it's about two and a half weeks post. And I love my nose. I think I had a very hard time adjusting to it right as soon as everything was removed and I was like, holy cow, the tip's really lifted. I, I know the tip's gonna drop over time, which is why they make it a lot higher than it needs to be. One thing that I did make clear with the doctor is that I didn't want them to push my nose in too much. I was afraid that it was gonna be way too flat for my face. Um, and obviously he didn't do that, he listened to me. As far as, so basically he did his own evaluation as he was in the surgery, and he basically said that if he were to bring it in anyway, that it would actually cause problems with my breathing. And I'm glad even if I did want it more in, he wouldn't do it just to know that it would have structural issues or so on. So he knew what was kind of his barriers and how to keep the structure of your nose um, good, basically. That's kind of pretty much the whole process of it all. Um, if you guys do have any questions at all, feel free to comment down below or you can also find me on Instagram and message me there. Um, but otherwise, if I were to give a rating, I honestly really enjoyed the whole process with Dr. Dilber. Um, I think he did an amazing job. I am super happy with my nose and it just gets better every single day. And uh, that's pretty much it. Thanks guys.